All right, good morning to one and all. Um, today, by popular demand, I'm doing a remake of the video I did a couple of years ago about um, adding IDM certificates to cockpit. Apparently, there were some issues with that. I'm guessing that had to do with, um, with RHEL 8 coming out and the video not applying to RHEL 8, um, I think. Um, anyway, I promised to do a new one, so I'm doing a new one today. Uh, this one is going to be pretty quick because of a lot of the uh, prep work that I did in the in the previous video it still holds. So basically, what we're going to do, as you see behind me, um, there's a there's an IDM console. I have the IDM server in there, obviously listed as a host. I have a client seven and a client eight running rel seven and rel eight respectively. You can see that the IDM server, um, the, the the console has a secure connection, uh, which basically means that. Um, I have imported the CA certificate from IDM into my browser, so that works. And then I have two tabs open um, to client 7 and client 8 respectively to their cockpit hosts, and those are not um, proper certificates, those are self-signed ones at the moment. And we're going to replace them with ones that we get from IDM. So let's start off with RHEL 7. RHEL 7 being relatively difficult between RHEL 7 and RHEL 8 for getting um, certificates and automated certificates from, from um, ID, um, IDM free IPA. Um, we, need to do, we need to do and know two things before we get started with RHEL 7 in getting that certificate into the right directory for Cockpit. The first one is that Cockpit on RHEL 7, being older than Cockpit on RHEL 8, actually expects a single file containing certificate and key information in WSCerts.d, and it does not expect two files. So we need to concatenate the files we get through IPA get cert. And I do that through a script that I have um, in user local SBIN. It's called Cockpit Certs, and it concatenates the certificates I get through IPA get cert into a file that lives in wscerts.d, prepended with 50. So when Cockpit starts up, it sorts the certificates and it takes the last one, basically the one with 50 prepended to it because the self-signed certificate has a zero. Uh, we chone this to root Cockpit WS and we ch ch mod it to um, 0640 because this contains private key information and we don't want everybody who is able to log into the system to actually see what's in this file. So what we want to do is we want to issue the IPA get cert command and pass it the name and the location of this script with the host name of the system I'm working with as a, as, as a single parameter. Then every time this, the certificate is renewed, this script is automatically executed and we don't have to think about this anymore. So this works except for SE Linux because the cert monger process, basically the process that we um, issue commands to with IPA get cert cannot write into directories that have etsy underscore t type for um, for SE Linux. So as you can see here, um, the WS search D has etsy underscore t type, which means that certmonger cannot write into this specific directory. What we're going to do to fix this is we're going to set an SE Linux context on this directory that is cert underscore t like that, and that means that certmonger can now actually write into this directory. So problem solved. Um, is this the best possible solution? I've played around with writing custom policy for SE Linux for this. Um, that becomes more difficult fairly quickly than this is. I don't think there's a huge drawback here because the only thing we're going to do is allow certmonger to write into an additional directory. Um, if you have another opinion on that, please let me know. Uh, we're going to issue this command, um, set the proper SE Linux context on this directory by issuing restorecon f vr into this whole directory. As you can see, the, the self-signed certificates are now relabeled as cert underscore t, and uh, we should be able to get our certificate through the get cert IP, uh, um, IPA cert, IPA get cert command right now. Excuse me for tripping over my own tongue there. So we're going to issue this specific command. I'm, I'll walk you through this. Um, we're going to issue IPA get cert request, get, get us a certificate basically, telling certmonger to get us a, a, a certificate. We're going to pass it a, a location for the certificate file itself with dash F. We're going to pass it a location for the certificate key with dash K over there. Um, a domain name, a principal, because we're talking to um, a combined Kerberos LDAP um, um, server with free IPA slash I or, or IDM, or whatever you want to call it. And we're going to pass it this command. So we're going to pass it the name of my script and we're gonna pass it the host name as a single parameter. And this is going to be executed every time the certificate is renewed. So we should have zero worries about this in the future. So I'm gonna hit enter. It says new signing request, and then a long number was added. Um, let us take a look at um, this specific request. Um, output of get cert list is we're monitoring now, meaning we've actually 
got the certificate, we're monitoring the certificate for expiration. Um, the key pair is stored in, the, the, the key is stored in the, the, the location I passed it when, when I um, issued the IPA get cert command, same for the, for the certificate. And now in WS search where we are located right now, I have a 50 client seven IDM um, land.cert file, which contains both the key information and the certificate information. You can see that it's mode 640 and it has been labeled uh, with the right as a Linux label. Um, when we restart cockpit right now, so we're going to restart uh, cockpit and we don't, we want to restart the service, not the socket. We restart cockpit, we should be able to switch over to my browser and we would see the correct certificate working for this system now. now as a Slight reminder, the self-signed certificate, I have not removed that. I'm going to just leave that in place. It's not hindering me in any way. Uh, we'll just leave it there. I'm going to switch over to the browser and check if what I've done is correct. So here we are. This is my browser. Um, browser is currently pointing at the port 1990 on my client 7 system. I have not refreshed this yet after I replace the certificate. I'm going to hit Control R right now. And what you'll see is that this Certificate is now actually valid, or at least it's been signed by a known certificate authority to me, and I'm able to log into the system over cockpit with a proper certificate chain attached to it. So I'm not going to log in. That's out of the scope of this tutorial. We're going to switch over to RHEL 8 now. So switching over to RHEL 8, um, good thing to know is that cockpit on RHEL 8 is a little newer, which means we do not have to combine the key file and the certificate file into a single file for cockpit anymore. We can just give it a separate key file and a separate certificate file on wscerts.d, and it will work just perfectly. We do still have to set the SE Linux context on that directory for uh, in order for a cert monger to be able to write to it. So that's something we're going to do first. And then we're going to hit restore con. There we go. So everything that was in that directory is now relabeled with the proper SE Linux labels. As you can see, cert underscore T. And what we're going to do now is we're going to issue a slightly different IPA get cert request command that we than we did on um, on RHEL 7. I'm going to walk, I'll walk you through the command real quick. We're still going to pass it the location for the certificate file and the certificate key. But as you can see right now, the Locations are directly in cockpit slash wscerts.d. So we're not moving anything around anymore. I do not have to have a separate script to um, uh, to, to concatenate files or to chone things anymore. Uh, these files are directly managed through um, IPA get cert and renewed through IPA get, IPA get cert later on. So the dash d and the, and the dash k commands are uh, identical to the uh, command on rel 7. But these are new. We have lowercase m, uppercase m, as you can see there, an uppercase O and lowercase O. And these set the permissions and the ownership on the key file and the certificate file respectively. So if we, if we issue this command, just hit enter there, uh, you can see that when I do IPA get cert list, 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 that actually this file has been issued because it's monitoring. The location is underneath the cockpit directory. Same goes for the certificate itself. So the key and the cert are um, both there in separate files. And um, I don't have a post save command anymore here like I had on rel 7. Um, if I look at this directory, you can actually see that I have the client 8 IDM.land cert and key both here. Um, these will sort itself below um, the zero. So if, if, if this directory is sorted by cockpit, uh, the client C is going to um, sort later than the zero. So um, it will automatically pick the right certificate here. I should actually have prepared these with 50 or 99 as well, but I forgot. Um, in terms of SE Linux, you can see that there are cert underscore T, so that's all great. If I restart cockpit here, and again, I want to restart the service, not the socket. If I restart this, I switch over to my browser, and you should be able to see that I have a proper certificate in RHEL 8 now as well. So switching over to my browser. And here we are in the browser. As you can see right now, I'm running with the, um, with the, uh, the little... Um, padlock with an exclamation mark here. I'm running with a cell sign certificate. I can add um, an exception to it. We're not going to do that. We're going to just refresh it and it should give us the proper certificate that I've already trusted the CA for. So I hit Ctrl R. There we are. Um, we got a proper client uh, cockpit login for RHEL 8. The padlock exclamation mark has disappeared because we are now actually running um, with a proper certificate signed by the CA from my IDM domain. So that's it. I hope this actually this one actually works for everybody. I'm gonna leave it with this. If there are any questions, let me know and I'll try to follow up um, in text or if it's a really big one in uh, another video. Thanks for watching and talk to you later.